Yeah. Uh, yes. Voice is loud and clear. Yeah, great then. So guys, uh, we are we are starting a, a Reba session now. Okay. So as all of you know, we are into this Reba session since uh, almost uh, seven to eight years. We are we have been training a lot of professionals in SAP Reba. Okay. Almost we have trained approximately I can say around four thousand our professionals here. So all of them are well placed and are working in a very good uh, MNCs as well. So this training goal is basically we are covering everything in detail with respect to, you know, hands on very properly. Uh, we are covering all the scenarios over here. OK, so hope this session is going to give you a lot of insight and uh, just I'll tell you a little about Manish. Manish is having more than 18, 19 years of experience, all procurement side. OK, he worked in SAP MM SRM. And since last 10 years, he's working in SAP Ariba. He's a solution architect right now. Okay, so hope this session is going to give you a clear insight of uh, what is SAP Ariba. How is it going to be beneficial for your career growth and all? Okay, Manish, over to you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, Haraj. <clears throat> and thanks for the intro as well. Guys, give me a second. I'm going to screen share. And we'll uh, no get problem. started. Thank you. Yes, sure. So guys, uh, uh, Araj, you were saying something? Uh, you guys can see my screen. It's a Word document. Great. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, Manish. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was saying to everyone, like I request everyone to be on mute so that, you know, we can clearly understand uh, what you are teaching over here. OK, so at the end of the session, we are going to take up the question answers so that would be more easier, you know, and everyone will be, you know, if you are having any questions in between, you can make a note separately. Later on, we'll be giving a uh, chance to, uh, uh, you know, ask the questions from your end. OK, hope you can coordinate. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for your coordination, guys. Okay, so we are learning about SAP Ariba, right? This training is going to have a number of sessions. Today is just an intro, just to introduce to you guys what Ariba is all about, right? Um, so what is SAP Ariba, right? So that's that's what we'll try to understand. What is SAP Ariba? That's the first question we should try to understand. Answer: It is an e-procurement. Solution, right? Provided by SAP. What is e-procurement? E-procurement is procurement that is done by a solution on the cloud. That's what we mean by e-procurement here. So, all in nutshell, it is a cloud-based procurement solution. We all understand what cloud-based means, right? But for those who don't, cloud-based means there is no uh, need to maintain hardware, no need to maintain servers. It's a subscription-based model. Clients who implement SAP Ariba, they will go through a reasonably long project, right? Uh, however, they will not own the uh, site or the servers in which Ariba is installed, right? They will instead pay for it on a subscription basis number of licenses, uh, number of users, number of transactions. Depending upon the module, it varies what subscription model is used, right? So key points about this, the servers are not owned by the client who implements SAP Ariba. Instead, and pays for the usage. I think it is a pretty common model these days. It's not um, something which is very, very new right now. There's a lot of other tools out there of different kinds which give this uh, particular type of functionality being cloud-based or subscription-based. The key point is SAP owns it. SAP is a pretty big company, if all of us know, right? All of us probably know about SAP more or less. 
and it being an SAP product, there is a good market for it right? because SAP, uh, when they implement their uh, solution, um, which is their ERP system, there is there are particular use cases for which SAP Ariba e procurement solution is uh, augmenting or you can say supplementing what SAP does, right? So certain things which SAP cannot do or certain things which SAP cannot do as nicely on the procurement side, that's where the solution of SAP Ariba comes in. So why SAP Ariba? When a client has an option, or let's say SAP S4 HANA, solution which has a very mature ML module. We understand this, we will understand you know why it makes sense to learn Ariba, why clients implement Ariba. Right? Certain functionalities in SAP are not mature enough to support certain procurement processes. What are these processes? Let's just try to note them down. Strategic sourcing, which Ariba, for which Ariba has a strategic sourcing module or sourcing module. Contract management, for which Ariba has a contract management module, or just let's just call it contracts module. Our management, for which Ariba has SLP module, and casual. is requisitioning which also involves for which Ariba has buying and guarded buying module. Guarded buying is not a module, it's an interface, but I'm just lumping it together because guarded buying goes with buying, right? So you will see there is a bit of overlap in SAP and also, I know there is a question, um, Kana. I'll just take a shortcut for your name, Kana. Uh, if you could hold on to your questions, we'll just have them all together. Okay. So we noted down a few modules: sourcing, contracts, SLP, guarded buying. So these are, you can say, four things or four modules or four solutions which SAP Ariba has, but in which you can say SAP is lacking more or less, right? Hence, why it makes sense to implement Ariba for clients. And so naturally, we will cover all these in our training, and we'll try to touch each of these briefly. So now, let's talk about what are the, I think I just noted down one point. There is one more point, right? Um, certain functionalities in SAP are, Ariba has good integration, SAP S4 HANA to the middleware called um, the name recently changed CIG. That's the old name, by the way. Cloud integration. I like this name, the new name is very long, right? There is no acronym for it yet, okay? So firstly, you get all these functionalities in a tool, right? Which is gonna complement what SAP does. Secondly, this tool is gonna work seamlessly with SAP. Okay? So, which is a big plus point for clients, because if you buy another tool, like let's say Notary, but there are other e-procurement solutions out there. You buy them, you say you want to use them. Then the question comes, how is that tool going to work with SAP? As for okay. 
that's where SA Pariba stands out. There is a nice middleware which has 30 plus interfaces uh, to um, mention it very conservatively, right? which are out of the box. So it's basically plug and play. Right? So this is the, I would say these are the two main reasons why it makes sense for clients to implement SAP Riba and why they do, right? So we learned very, very briefly what is SAP Riba at a high level. We haven't talked about modules. We learned about why it, it makes sense to implement SAP Riba. Now let's learn about what modules SAP Riba has and which we cover in our training. Actually, right? Otherwise, what's the point of knowing if we are not even going to cover it, right? <clears throat> Just mentioned here, there's a module called sourcing, right? So number one is sourcing module. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write those modules and briefly explain you guys what those modules do, right? And as we progress in our trainings, what we will do is we'll touch each of those modules in a very deep level of detail. Right, in which we will understand what are those modules doing in terms of processes, right? So what are those modules doing in terms of functionality? What are those modules? What 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 is the configuration involved in those modules um, based on real life examples? Right. So we'll cover all those in very, very detailed level. Right now we're gonna look at a very high level so that you guys understand what Ariba is, what solutions it has or what modules it has. Sourcing module. What does this module do? This module is designed to support the RFX and auctions process within a within an, within a large organization. I would use the word large organization, right? Like for mom and pop shops, it will make no sense to implement Ariba. Actually, right? Large organization, large public sector organization, right? Uh, government of India, large retail organization, right? Walmart, right? all those big companies, it will make sense to implement Ariba for doing sourcing right? because what happens in large companies is when you want to buy something, right? you don't go to a store or a website and you complete your transaction, use your credit card on your shopping card and you're done. Right? You approach it in a more strategic manner. Right? In other words, Iba supports strategic sourcing, right? which is a key process in B2B, which is what? Business to business. Not talking about B2C. We're not talking about Manish going to uh, Amazon and buying um, shoes. We're not talking about that, right? Uh, we are talking about a large government organization, let's say government of India, buying uh, 10,000 computers over the next five years. We're, we're talking about huge volumes, probably complex specs, right? Probably warranties, return policies, many complexities, right? So it's not like you add your 10,000 computers on your cart and you're done, right? Nobody's gonna give you those computers uh, without understanding um, like what's your approach to buy all those, right? So it's complex, that's the main point I wanna make. Uh, and that's where this module comes in place, right? So, but what is RFX? That's what we are trying to answer. RFX is you are trying to find a source of supply basically right the goal of this module is to find a suitable source of supply or a specific need such as large government organization Needs NK laptops 
of various kinds over next years. This is a great example of a complex B2B uh, procurement, which will start with sourcing, right? So as we look into various modules, we will look into sourcing. It is gonna start with RFX process, right? And as we go into other modules, we'll see there's a flow or the overall end-to-end -end process that is happening in Ariba, right? And for that matter, in various other tools out there, right? Here it is much more detailed, I would say, because of different detailed functionalities in various modules. It supports an end-to-end -end process of B2B procurement, which starts with sourcing. Okay. So in this module, the users will create RFX documents. RFX documents, for example, request for proposal. Example, sorry. Which number of qualitative content is involved and a number of line items for which pricing is needed is involved. Tomorrow we'll look into a live example of RFX in which we'll pick request for proposal. So this one we'll see in the system how it works tomorrow. Um, so this is what sourcing module is all about at a very, very high level, of course, right? Then what is there is contracts module. We said the goal of this module, let me try to maybe make it bold or highlighted. The goal of sourcing module is to find a source of supply, right? So we said that a large government organization has a need of various kinds of laptops, total 10,000 over the next five years, right? In this case, sourcing is gonna tell you you have worked with, let's say, 10 different suppliers in your sourcing module, right? And you had a very complex criteria for evaluation and you have done that. You have concluded that there is a company, ABC, right? Let's say it is company ABC. For example, let's assume the outcome of sourcing was that these suitable source of supply which is nothing but a vendor by the way a vendor or a supplier is company abc we found that a suitable source of supply is company abc the goal is to find a suitable source of supply let's say we do certain things in sourcing right which we'll see in detail tomorrow and the outcome of that is company abc right that's our source then what next? Are you gonna post on social media? Like Twitter, this is my company ABC, my best friend? No, that's not the case, right? You're looking into getting into some sort of legal relationship with them, right? So that over next five years, which is our goal, to transact with them, things are under control as per our terms, as per their terms, right? And it's called something called procurement contract, right? Or, or purchasing contract. Right? So that's where this contracts module of Ariva comes in picture. Now, if you guys are from ERP background, you probably know contracts for transactions, right? Uh, there is pricing. There are probably some limits at dollar value or quantity value, right? There is that contract. There is no doubt in it. That's there in Ariba as well, which supports it. But there is other call, other contract called a lease, right? So this module supports two things. Two things, broadly speaking. is the transactional contract which I just mentioned this contract is used for transaction purposes actually because there is line items and everything
It also supports creation of a legal agreement. So when buyers or procurement people talk about contracts, they generally talk about these two combined. I know ERP systems generally are focused on transactional side of things, right? Because they want to support the PRPO process. But when in business function, when people who work in procurement, right? Um, like in this case, large government organization example we took, when they talk about contract, they talk about both things, right? And it is this thing that ERPs mostly lag on creation of a legal agreement, management of a legal agreement, right? And that's where this contract module comes in. So they will let you, this module will let you manage, create the transaction contract, but also the legal agreement. Right? So this is a legal contract. The is and C's of the buying organization and the supplier ABC. That's what contracts module supports. The There is configuration, quite a bit of configuration involved in both, you know, sourcing and in contracts, right? And we will look at them in great level of detail as we cover those sessions, right? Um, how Reba does all this? This is just two words, legal agreement and transactional contract. How Reba does all this, right? Um, there is a certain way in, and certain similarities between various modules, uh, sourcing and contracts and some other modules we'll see. That's because Reba has its own design, right? The way it is designed. And you guys will notice that as we start learning one module, we'll see similarities between the second and then between the third and so on, right? And we will cover all that in detail, how to configure, um, in detail how the process works in very um, in a great level of detail with real life examples right so sourcing module contracts module so this gave you a source of supply the goal of this module is to finalize legal slash binding agreement with the supplier ABC, which was identified in sourcing module. Right? So in sourcing module, you found your best friend or your most suitable supplier. In contracts module, you detailed how the two of you are going to work together. You will document the prices. Right? You might want to get into more detailed pricing, possibly. Right? You will get into terms and conditions of the legal agreement. That's the primary goal of the contacts module. Let's highlight this one. So this is finding source of supply. And this is letting you get in a contract or a legal banding agreement. Of course, there are pricing details as well with the same supplier. You guys see a flow there? Find a source, get into agreement with the source. And this is crucial before you start transacting. Right? Since we're talking about suppliers, and before we go into the transaction side of things, Ariba SLP module, let's talk about that. This is what? This is the module which is designed to onboard suppliers onto Reba slash SAP so that Reba processes slash SAP processes. So this module is not just for Reba, by the way, SLP module it is also for SAP or for I would say probably mostly SAP, not I won't get into other ERP systems, right? SAP module has supplier data, right? What you will do is you will fill some forms, uh, get some data from suppliers, right? In Excel file or over email, and you will 
what you will do is you'll go to SAP and you will create their supplier, which is now called business partner. Okay. SLP module, what it does is it will let you collect that data from the supplier in which supplier itself fills that data. So which, you, which means the supplier is managing their own data, more or less. So it's called self-serve management of supplier data from the supplier side. And you as a client or a buying organization, what you're doing is you're basically looking at the forms and approving, finding any gaps. And there is uh, quite a bit of detailed process which goes beyond it. So goal of SLP module is to onboard. If you do guys are confusing with the word onboard, let's say, create suppliers to a SAP so that a reband SAP process can be so and there is much more to it right SLP goes beyond our creation our management for the entire life cycle of the supplier it's a very nice module um, I think you know very good demand right now. So are by the way the modules, right? This is a very nice module. I mean, whenever Reba implements, this is just gonna go in there for sure. So we talked about SLP, sourcing contracts at a high level, what it does. We have suppliers. If you look into the three modules we covered, we said have a source of supply, right? RFX, working with the supplier. In reality, when we look into Ariba, we'll see that in order to work on sourcing and on contracts, you need supplier data. So really the process is gonna start with creating a supplier, which is gonna bring SLP modules in the forefront, right? So you will start with the SLP module and then you will do the other processes. But sequentially, I'll explain to you guys later on, right? But it comes before even sourcing uh, in terms of the flow of data, okay? Supplier lifecycle performance, SLP, sourcing, contracts. There is another module which is, I would say, in a way linked with the SLP module, it's called supplier risk module. Ariba supplier risk module. Not a typical procurement process it supports. It's goes slightly beyond, beyond procurement, I think, right? It goes into risk management, supplier risk management, right? And was launched uh, with the view that global supply chains, which are long, global organizations, right, which are procuring um, goods globally, right? They don't know what's happening in other parts of the world, right? And there is a lot of data that is available online in different websites. So Riva thought, why, how about if we leverage the key data sources available online and provide insight to the, um, the buying organization, what's happening with their supplier base? That's where this next module came in picture. There is like, you can see this module looks or processes data from proxy, approximately, sorry, 750,000 data sources of various kinds, we'll sign a risk profile to the supplier. Buyer deals with, so that there is a clear visibility into the supply chain for a given supplier. Let's take an example. There, there are two wars happening in the world right now, right? I'm sure there are suppliers there uh, which are being used by different companies across the world. Of course, war is in the news right now, right? News are very high level. They won't go into that level of detail, um, which part is impacted more, which city is impacted, right? Is that city stable? Is that city not stable? So, right? so, but there are other data sources which will look into all that. Some of those are 
are not available to public either. Right? So it is those data sources which Shariva is going to look at and say that at a more detailed level, of course, your supplier is there in, let's say, Israel, right? Um, but it's not close to border. Let's say it's going to say that your supplier is located very far away from the border, other side of the country. There is very little risk, although country risk is high. Just giving an example. So it's going to segment your supplier based on their location. Of course, it's going to look at supplier itself. Like what if supplier itself is involved in something wrong? Right? And in that case, it's going to give you a view of what the supplier is doing in terms of risk. And it is going to give you risk into different uh, categories. Right? We will look into detail what all those are. So not a typical procurement um, process, right? Mainly a risk, mainly a visibility with it, which it gives you from the risk perspective, right? But again, if you look at all these are, what they're doing is these modules are supplementing or, or helping what other ERPs do. Mostly ERPs are not focused on detailed strategic sourcing, the legal contract management, uh, self self supplier management, and risk, right? So these four modules are, you can say they stand out in terms of the ERPs do not give you functionalities uh, to this level of detail, right? Now, this is about these four modules. There is also two other modules. There is a Riva buying module, which also has guided buying. They said that SAP has a very mature process of procure to pay. ERPO GR process. So why would somebody implement a Riva buying? They will implement a Riva buying when they are not a big. Well, they can still implement, by the way, even if they are big manufacturer. I was going to say big manufacturer. So where a Riva buying module comes in picture is casual procurement. Right? This module supports casual procurement or indirect procurement. Whereas SAP, for example, suppose direct procurement. Direct procurement is what? When there is inventory management involved, okay? when there is forecasting involved, when there is manufacturing involved. Okay? Those are examples of direct procurement. Indirect procurement is you buy things, but you're not using them for your manufacturing, right? You're buying goods, but you're using for your internal use, right? Internal use is what? For example, large manufacturer. Needs the supplies for its employees or need janitorial services cleaning their manufacturing facilities. These are some examples. So, things which SAP can do, SAP can do these things by the way, it can help you procure office supplies. There are ways to do. There too. It can help you procure generator services. So, what is the benefit of Riva? Right? It will help you do in a slightly nicer, nicer manner. So, whenever there is a room for casual procurement, indirect procurement, Riva stands out because let's put, put it this way if SAP can, let's compare it with SAP. SAP can support ER, EO, GR. Why would a client implement Ariba buying? Because of catalog management? Because of mature and when I when you guys look at approval flows, you will see they are actually very mature as compared to the other ERP tools out there. Mature and very flexible approval flows. And greater ability. Collaborate to find source of supply. So you can see that buying module helps you do procurement, which is not direct. Right? There is no inventory involved, there is no forecasting involved. And examples are office supplies, janitorial services. Right? And also, there is something called guided buying. is 
So it does same things, but in a much nicer manner. So if let's say I'm a user working in a manufacturing company, right? I need office supplies. Just take an example of office supplies. I have no option to <clears throat> buy office supplies in my company. What will I do? I will probably buy on Amazon right? because there are other websites out there uh, which are primarily geared to give you a good experience for shopping in their consumer websites. Right? So what Ariba came out with a long time back, of course, is that why don't we give you the same experience internally? Right? So they, they came up with this option of catalog management, card buying, which consumer websites have, right? But they are for the consumer. So you can say these are internal websites for clients made for the employees of the clients, right? With the data that is used by the client itself, but not by other people outside the organization. So this is a very local consumer website just for the employees of the organization. So this is buying module guided buying module and if you look at the flow once again you first found a supply for 10,000 laptops over the next five years you got into contract with those suppliers of course first you created those suppliers over long term you will going to risk whatever right then you come into transaction side you create a catalog which has let's say 20 different catalog items right and all of them has contracted pricing right and then what's going to happen is users will shop those 10,000 laptops over five years, different kinds into current buyings, current buying interface or UI, where you will see what you will see pictures of laptop, specs of laptop, any really nice commercial website look and feel. Right, so that's end to end. This is what Ariba tries to do for you. But of course, you got to pay the vendor as well, right? For that, Ariba does have a module called invoice management, right? Ariba invoice management module. And this, as the name says, this module aims to streamline the invoicing process within a buying organization. Supports I would no, I will not use words, but it stands out because is it has native SAP business network or Ariba network. The inverse management module streamlines the invoicing process. Right. Invoicing process is what you bought something, somebody has to pay for it, you get a bill and you pay the bill. So, but it's not as simple as that. Again, we're talking about B2B. There could be approvals, there could be discrepancies in pricing, right? And there might be validations needed for receiving and all that. And I didn't mention that buying module will support your receiving uh, functionality as well and service entry sheet functionality as well, right? And from there, Invoice will come in and it's going to do, try to do a three way match, right? So the goal is to support the three way match so that supplier ABC can be in. That's invoice management. Now, all this, all these are modules from Ariva. The Ariba doesn't support payments, by the way, right? You will get invoice, you got to pay the invoice, but payment is not happening in Ariba. Reason is we're talking about large organizations, right? We're not talking about mom and pop shops, right? And large organizations typically have an ERP system, which have the financial module, right? So that's why payment is, or the payment run is going to happen in the financial module. Hence why payment is not done in Ariba, but the payment request is sent by Ariba invoicing module to the ERP system. So it's an integrated process. We will look into it as well. Right? Um, so these are the modules in Ariba. 
which we will cover. And there is also the middleware, which I just mentioned. It's called CIG formerly. And now it's called Gateway. That's a new game, new name for it. Middleware has number of standard out of the box interfaces between Ariba modules and SAP support plug and play. Or even add SAP. This is the middleware we will look at into it. What are the various steps in uh, configuration, and also we will look into um, the various scenarios which can happen and so on. Lastly, there is something called SAP Business Network or Ariba Network. This is not a module, or you, you can even call it a module. So this is total for suppliers. See, ERP systems typically do not have anything for a supplier to do, at least not standard. Right? But Ariba has always thought suppliers are very, very important for us because procurement is all about working with suppliers. Right? So they have very early on, they started giving attention to suppliers before anybody else could even think about. So they have currently This portal has more than 3 million registered suppliers that are working with many buyers to support approximately, I think it's $1 trillion per year, USD um, transactions. So this is a very big um, benefit as well for Ariba, which I probably should have mentioned early on, right? like why clients implement Ariba, SAP Business Network, third point. Very, very big benefit of having Ariba. So this business network or Ariba network, which has many suppliers, it's going to interact with the SLP module, with the contracts module, with the sourcing module, with the risk module, with the buying module, invoice management module. Basically, everything in Ariba or every single module in Ariba, right? It has some sort of integration with the Ariba network or SAP business network. So when a client implements Ariba, they will see that, hey, so many suppliers are already on there. That's a big plus point for us. We don't have to worry about our key suppliers which are already using the Ariba network. That's typically the reaction they give when you work with them for implementing this solution. Um, I think this is basically the overview I wanted to give you guys at this point. Um, Ayraj, I think uh, unless you want to add something, we probably can start taking questions. Yeah, sure, Manish. Yeah, yeah it was a nice uh, you know, session. Uh, Okay, guys, so whoever are having any queries, so please raise your hands or you can unmute yourself and start asking your queries. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. Every one of you are uh, unmuted, so you can unmute from your end and start asking the questions. Yeah, hi, Iraj. Uh, hello, Manish. Good evening. Yeah, Mom. Uh, yeah. This is Mom. Uh, Basically, I'm an uh, integration architect uh, uh, for one of the MNC company. So uh, I have two questions. Uh, uh, first one is related to like uh, a customer point of view. Uh, customer will uh, uh, have many procurement solutions like uh, MM is uh, it's not fully procurement, but uh, they have procurement solutions like MM, SRM and uh, uh, you know, uh, 
Sorhana sourcing and procurement uh, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different so procurement solutions they have uh, they have already in place. Uh, they are using since long uh, time. But uh, why Ariba? So uh, if they implement Ariba, the customer implement Ariba, it's really gonna give uh, uh, ROI and ROT for the customer. So how we can uh, uh, give our best example or best uh, suggestions to our customers to implement Ariba? Uh, just I want to know uh, more about uh, so this point uh, so that we can uh, uh, suggest uh, our customers to implement uh, Ariba in their uh, organization. Yeah, great question, Mohammed. I think uh, if we just look at what we just said, client will have uh, let's say your SAP S4 HANA, right? It does have sourcing. It has transactional contract. It lets you create suppliers. It lets create your PRPO. But these modules are very, very detailed in terms of what they can do. Of course, unless you understand what these modules do in detail, probably you cannot say that with great confidence, right? So um, SAP is gonna let you create, a, let's say a sourcing, right? RFQ, right? Um, it won't let you create RFX though, right? So what's gonna happen is, your client will not have an option of creating RFX in a system. They will do that in, let's say, a Word document or an Excel file. Right? Over time, what's going to happen is, depending upon how big the volume is, they will have a tough time tracking what's what. Right? They will have a lot of resource overload, again, depending upon the volume of RFXs. Right? Uh, they will spend a lot of time in managing that data itself. They, it's going to be hard to report. It's going to be hard to go back and see what was happened in the past. It's going to be hard to support audits. Right? This is where, if you have a solution that is already there, which supports all these things in a very nice and mature manner, this solution is just going to help them out. So this is one example. Similarly, there is other modules. They have their own benefits. So, Does it help? Uh, yeah, my point yeah. is like, uh, is it really uh, gonna help a customer uh, if they implement Ariba, uh, even though they have the other procurement solution like EAMS or MMM other modules? So yes, it how help. we can uh, give the best uh, uh, suggestions and uh, solutions? So if they implement Ariba, definitely they will get understand that there are some. Uh, it's uh, Ariba is completely a e procurement uh, uh, cloud uh, solution. Uh, right, it's, right. Uh, it's, uh, it has a uh, full uh, full features and uh, functionalities for uh, uh, for uh, procuring uh, for any any large companies uh, uh, for, so that uh, they can get more uh, more benefits uh, in terms of uh, buying because of uh, we have very large network in Ariba buyer network. So yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. is the so, point. Yeah. Yeah, in your question, the answer is there. Yeah, it is a very good point, actually. I was about to tell the same thing. So SAP Ariba network is a very huge network. This is one of the very biggest network in the world, having almost 4 million suppliers already there. So there is no need to go for the suppliers separately and look out for them. Okay, so already a lot of suppliers already there. So when you are connecting to the suppliers, and it's going to be very easy for the suppliers also, you know, interacting with the uh, spend management people as well. So there is a lot of easiness over there. And Ariba is coming with a cloud solution, as you said very rightly. And the licensing part is here very, uh, you know, flexible over here. If somebody wants to go only with the, you know, upstream sort of uh, licensing, they can go only upstream. Even SLP's licensing also they are giving it. And different regions, their licensing policies are different. So they are encouraging to use SAP Ariba and they are going to implement uh, AI related, uh, you know, features in in uh, very soon it's there in the roadmap and i think manish it has already been started right ai features in sap yeah. well. so, yeah, there are sourcing there are some things which we'll look at they are i would say there there is a bit of ai in them yeah yes you are right so there are multiple reasons you can give if you are talking with respect to the business prospect you and you are trying to convince any client so there are multiple reasons you can give them like it's a cloud solution, easy implementation, no need to maintain any hardware and no need to maintain the resources to have the hardware look out properly for that. 
So that is one of the cost saving factors. And the licensing also is one of the cost saving factor. And there is no need of any enhancement over here. Like if you want to go for a normal thing, uh, what I can say, like if you are implementing ECC uh, MM site, okay, if you want to go some out of the box features, so, which is not uh, the sorry, uh, are going to uh, uh, sorry, yeah. sorry for disturbing, yeah. uh, interrupting you. No uh, problem. These yeah, are yeah, yeah. generic, no generic uh, uh, features that we can explain uh, to any customer, but uh, the customer is asking more about uh, the uh, ROI and ROT. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's say uh, if this uh, they implement uh, Ariba, even though they have MM and other procurement solutions, so how they are going to uh, get benefited? That is my uh, no. point. Yeah, these 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 are the uh, beneficial points which we are discussing, trying to discuss over here. If you're talking about ROI return on investment, so of course you see like if it's a fresh uh, customer, it's a greenfield project, so. You see, one thing is there, we, we cannot deny like uh, there, there cannot be totally, uh, you know, independent Ariba. There is no means like there can be, but if it's a very big organization, there must be an ERP solution. You okay. agree with me, right? So there must be an ERP yeah. solution. So uh, whichever the things you're talking about, SAP, MM site, so it's a part of an ERP. So we cannot, we can't deny it. But you see, going for, forward, like SAP is having multiple solutions for, uh, sorry, multiple products for the same solution, I can say. It has correct, SRM correct. and SRM, they are going correct. to make it absolute anyhow. So SRM yeah. totally going to be absolute in 2027 for sure. Okay. So all the projects in SRM are going to be migrated to SAP Ariba. Okay. And going further, yeah. uh, it's having a very strong development roadmap in SAP Ariba. So a lot of features they are whichever are available you know redundant features so they are going to pull out from there and they are going to made it available on only in ariba so going in future definitely ariba is going to be the sole procurement solution it's like i'm thinking in my perspective and there are uh, development roadmap is also there in the same fashion so yeah, these are the major right, points uh, yeah yeah uh, you rightly said i agree with you uh, yeah, I got my answer. Uh, I'll connect with you later on this. Uh, uh, this yeah, yeah, you can connect with me. It's a very long discussion, I can say. We can't yeah, discuss yeah, yeah, yeah. so many right. features, so but many I things think, are there. So should, there are uh, things. Respect other times as well. Uh, the, my second question, so I'll <laughs> Thank uh, you so much, uh, last, second and last question. Uh, yeah. So we have uh, two middlewares uh, when integrating with Ariba, with S4. Uh, CIG and CPA both are there. So in which scenario uh, we can use uh, CIG and uh, in uh, which scenario we can use CPA? This is uh, my second question and last question. Yeah, CAG you will use in all scenarios. CPI you will use even there is multiple ERPs involved. Okay. It's going to be CIG then, uh, plus CPI when it is multi ERP. Uh, because uh, because if we use uh, both uh, middlewares, I think uh, we should not. Uh, is it uh, uh, is it a recommended solution by SAP or? Uh, it is recommended uh, by SAP. Yes, exactly. Anyone. It is recommended. So CIG you will have in all solutions, like in all integrations between SAP and Ariba. Um, mm -hmm. CPI you will use only when there is more than one instance of SAP. So so I mean to say uh, CIG is for uh, point to point integration? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Manish. Uh, I, I have welcome, got uh, uh, the answer. Thanks for your time yep. and demo. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Th those were very great questions. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate. Yeah, guys, please come up with the questions. Anybody else? Hello? Yeah, can I get yeah. Yes, Sorry, my mic is a different. I yeah, have uh, two. Yeah, yeah, no clear, right? I have three questions actually. Like, uh, what is the different, uh, like, uh, ECC start sourcing and uh, Ariba strategic sourcing? What is the strategic? Uh, Right, right. So ECC um, has RFQ process, right? Ah, correct. Yeah, it doesn't have RFX process. Okay, like that's a, that is the only difference. Okay. Yeah, let's see that. Let's say that's the only difference. Yeah. Of course, there is a remote network. Uh, R, uh, RFX sourcing, nothing but a strategic sourcing. Huh? RFX what source. Is of R course, it begins. It begins with some like looking at your data, as, at your requirements, at your history as well. So there is more to just see. You can have a Word document which is RFX, right? But there is more okay. details in terms of the functionality, uh, which which is why it's called strategic sourcing, right? Um, okay. Also, there is also we said that there is business network, right? 
there is that native okay. integration with the business network as well which ecc will not have for the rfq process right okay okay there is one more like uh, ariba buying and guided buying what is the difference so guided buying is a relatively newer ui right? okay this is just a ui guided buying is a module sorry buying is a module in which there is many features like catalog management the ui called guided buying approval processes receiving happens this module as well so you can see buying is an equivalent of mm for ariba so this is equivalent of oh. mm like okay ER process, what is the ER different process. catalog management and guided buying both are same right catalog management is a function in which you are able to manage the catalogs like you know okay. items descriptions pictures and all that guided buying is the end user facing ui okay. this is not a ui this is you can say a feature in which you will load a bunch of data manage a lot of data right this is an interface which the end users will see okay okay what is spend management in ariba i didn't see anything in uh, mm side spend management so uh, collectively ariba is i mean it's different terminologies which are being used broadly bni when you log into bni the browser says ariba spend management at some point the all the solutions at which we are talking about they were called they are all spend management solution right now this word is also still being used so it's an, a word which is being used for it's not a module you can see it's a keyword some of the people in the industry use that ariba spend management is a solution but basically it means various modules in ariba okay spend management is one of the module right it's not a module it's basically you can see ariba is also called ariba spend management oh, okay any equivalent uh, word in mm side for the spend management mm is like right now it's being called sourcing and procurement right okay probably you can spend say management. That's spend management can we see any reports for that or like uh, it's just like a or some module ariba like uh i can it's say just, like spend management yeah. is just like a concept conceptual things okay so sourcing thing, yeah. and in short in short i can say spend management is collectively sourcing and procurement just for your understanding oh, okay. i can say okay yeah. okay so spend and management is mostly related with the buyer only buyers oh. buyer side okay yeah. okay there is one more final question actually like uh, can we move that uh, all ecc like uh, transaction to ariba like uh, what we call that one is a uh, guided buying or like it's a no we, we said here like ariba is for casual procurement and direct procurement right so okay whenever you have transactions for inventory right okay um, like your stock materials you're running mrp it's spitting out okay. transactions all those you probably don't want to move to ariba because ariba doesn't support inventory management okay it will support all types of procurements right like the consignment uh, procurement no it doesn't so it's for consumables you can say it's for consumables that's an easy way to look at there is always an account assignment that is being used so no special procurement and no inventory management oh okay just procurement only there is no specific special procurement there is no inventory also right yes, just purchasing right. and okay just there purchasing is no special, with, the, with the cost object Basically, okay, a kind of okay. service procurement here. Service, but also goods. Like as we said, laptop is a physical good. Similarly, office supplies are physical goods. But in SAP, you call them consumables, right? right. How so will we differentiate? No kind of... Yeah. How will we can... differentiate uh, like uh, that procurement in uh, Ariba to SAP? Like when we create in backend SAP, also will create the same document, right? We'll just create a material or service procurement chain. Yes, yeah, so you will have a different document type for Ariba POs to distinguish okay. between the SAP POs that are Ariba. Let's let's say your standard document type for POs and B, you'll have like Z and B, for example, for Ariba POs. Okay, there is one more question. Like, uh, what is a uh, commerce automation? I heard about in commerce yeah. automation. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. So remember, we said that. If you go at the bottom, we talked about Ariba Business Network, which has 3 million suppliers, 1 trillion transactions. So what SAP okay. said is that Ariba has such a big network. 
So okay. they renamed it as Savvy Business Network. It's it's not called Arriva Network anymore, right? So, okay. but what they also said is that how about your MRP uh, POs, like your stock POs, also go to the Arriva Network to the supplier. Okay. And so what they did is um, they made some changes on their SAP system for which you can do some configurations which will support PO transmission from SAP directly to Arriva Network. Not it's it not will out not of the box. Buy a network. Do not it's, go it to buyer network. It will go to buyer network. Right? No, no, not not buyer network. Supplier network. So SAP Business Network is a supplier network. It's not a buyer network. So that's okay. where suppliers will log. So when you say buyer network, what did you mean? It's like uh, where we are guided buying, where we are doing a uh, procurement process. No, it won't go there. It okay. will go directly. Then, so it's going to basically go from SAP S4 HANA to the SAP Business Network, where already there is like 3 million suppliers. So they, they don't have to wait for your uh, email, which will have an attachment, which SAP supports as one of the output methods. It's going to go directly in the portal. Okay, got it. How the data will move from ECC to S4, like through CAG only, this direct buyer yes. network? Yeah, CAG is the middleware for anything or EVA. So, to any buyer network, right? That commerce automation will support CAG only, right? Correct. Guided buying also, same CAG only? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I am, I got well clear and safe for each. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Thank you. Yep. So, guys, anybody else? Please open up your mics and ask the queries. Aras, can you give the yeah. overview? Like, uh, how many days will it take uh, the, this question? What time can you give? This? Okay. So, the course is starting uh, from tomorrow only. Okay. Tomorrow we have the first session. I hope. Yeah. So, tomorrow you can, all of you can attend the first session as well. So, uh, we are going to. Uh, the usual timings are only on the weekends because Manish is working and everyone else also working. Most of our, you know, uh, attendees are working professionals only. We don't take any freshers as well. So most of the participants either they are just start working in SAP or IBA or they are, uh, you know, having good experience in MM or S4 HANA side or any procurement background side. So we have planned this course only on the weekends, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. That's going to be 7 p.m. IST to uh, 10 p.m. IST. Okay, so three hours on Saturday and three hours on Sunday. So, so six hours. So the course duration would be approximately five five weekends. So total duration in terms of number of hours, if I say, is going to be 40 to 45 hours. Depends upon the questions we are, uh, you know, the participants are going to ask. And all the sessions which you are attending also going to be recorded. The live sessions with all your questions and everything going to be recorded. Indeed, today's session is also being recorded and is going to be shared with everyone else. So all the sessions will be recorded and shared to you and we'll be giving two months of server access as well. So that is very important. You need to practice more in order to get good grip in SAP Ariba site. And there are a lot of supportive documents also we are sharing to everyone. And there will be a lot of things like we will be creating the WhatsApp group among all the participants as well. Uh, after, you know, about to finish the course, we are creating the WhatsApp group. And whenever there are the opportunities for job, so definitely we'll be posting in that particular group as well. Did I answer your question? Uh, yes, Sarah's clear. Yeah, clear. Yep. So is there anything else, sir? Yeah, hi. Hi, Manish. Uh, this is Udai. I have a few questions. Yes. But, uh, I have noticed that you, know, you called few models of the uh, Arivar immature. What do you mean by that? Immature? No, I didn't say immature. Oh, I see. Oh, I see, I see. So what I was saying is, yeah, I mean, this is just my view, of course. Some people might have a different view. What I was saying is, no, no, I understand, at, but I want to know why. Yeah, why? Of course, right. I just so want to know why we, you say we, that. Yeah, we took one example like um, SAP has the RFQ process, right? You can create RFQ, then you can manually enter your codes in SAP. Right? It okay. it's very tactical. It's for very very unique particular need. It doesn't have uh, ability to. Uh, support the RFX process 
in which RFX is entered, created in, uh, in a system and sent directly to suppliers where suppliers can directly respond to you, right? So that's where I was coming from. SAP is lacking on um, sourcing functionality which Ariva provides. Or okay. I, I think I used the word immature there when I said it's lacking some features which Ariba has. Okay, I, I, I got it. Uh, well, I, I don't know if you know it, but you know, I think last week Ariba already made a statement. He, it gave out a news, right, where it said that, you know, all the procurement uh, modules which they have, you know, uh, in any form of S4 HANA or anything, you know, they are going to bring them to SAP procurement portfolio, the total portfolio into, you know, SAP Ariba. It already made a statement. See, there is many, I would say there is something in the news all the time going on, right? I mean, don't get too mixed up, right? I work in Ariba projects, oh, no, guys. No, as no, no. Products. I actually got it from I the, know what's happening in I the got market. it from the SAP server. Sorry, what was the, the news? Server. I have official. Uh, okay, if you so could let me news? share me the screen, I, I can directly show it to you. No, just tell it's me, I'll just, uh, see, I'll just Google it myself. What is it? Okay, SAP, it says, you know, SAP Ariba is a feature of procurement. Okay, it gave a public statement, SAP itself, right? It says, you know, we are bringing all the different elements of SAP procurement portfolio into the SAP Ariba brand. So the name so guys, you know as a procurement okay. leader, you know, where the only right, name right, you right. need to know, just as Exactly. So it's so basically branding, you can say. It's all they're trying to do. SAP is a big company, guys. They have like different solutions out there. There are success factors, Conquer, blah, blah, blah. I think they have been working hard to um, just brand themselves so that it's easy for their customers to understand. So this is one of the efforts. Okay. It's uh, Manish, all it says uh, is. Just, just to add uh, to his uh, question, like. Uh, Ariba uh, is also they are going to add many solutions, but at the same time they introduce uh, this one SAP CX customer services. So where they bring all the uh, Ariba C4C uh, the hybrids everything uh, they put into CX now. It's Which is kind great. Of right? I mean, it's easy yeah, for yeah, it's customers kind of to plan. understand what they are doing, right? Correct. Because customers Correct. do get confused yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You, that's why you were coming from why this, why that. You have so many things, right? Yeah, agreed. So yeah, that's a good point. Thanks for sharing the news with us. I think I probably missed that news, probably. I uh, I, I have a couple of questions more. Okay, uh, what is the difference between you know I mean transactional data and you know master data management? Okay, I understand okay. Uh, the overall picture, but you know I want to know how it is done. Where you where the transactional data comes into the picture here? Yeah, so if we think about supplier, right? You will create one supplier. You will use it for probably five years. If we talk about our company ABC, right? Let's so in this case, your company ABC is your master data of type supplier. But you will create POs for them. Let's say every day, and over five years, you will probably have ten different POs, right? And what does that mean? All that PO is an individual document in itself. Okay. Does it make sense? And that is transactional data okay 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 uh, individual you know the pr the you know contract workspace everything all the individual documents yeah they could they become the transaction data. correct correct yeah so i just okay. just guys give me a second uh, i think Araj has some uh, challenge yeah yes give uh, me just one second and you know can we access ariba uh, network yes, say, please, for sorry. example you know you say ariba yeah. network is quite uh, you said that ariba network is quite big okay Yes. And I want to access a supplier directly from the Ariba network. Can I do that? Or of you know, course. normally as of what I understood, the SLP module is you know something you know, we have to go speak to the supplier directly, right? With uh, out of the Ariba module, then you, we we have to try to bring him uh, into the network if he's not already in the network. I see. I see. That's a if good point. The network, you know, everything is. I see. understand your yeah. question. It's a good question. See. If I, let's say if I want to create a Facebook account or Twitter account, I'll just go there, I'll sign up, right? So I don't need any invitation yeah. to do that, right? Yes. But yes. for Ariba network, I need at least a PO from a, from a buyer or I need some request for mm -hmm. like SLP, as you mentioned, or from some other module. Mm -hmm. So I need something to begin to create an account. Okay. Because if you don't have Understood. any uh, okay. any, my, any of these, my question is, you know, let, yeah. My question is, you know, let's say for example, you know, I, I'm looking to buy a specific product. 
where, which I cannot uh, source anywhere from my you know immediate market. Okay, mm -hmm. so can I search for that? Can I search for a specific supplier over the network? Yeah, for that there is we talk about sourcing module. Sourcing module has a feature called Ariba Discovery. Right, so that's part okay. of Ariba uh, network. It's still part of Ariba network in oh. terms of the architecture, but it's a different place um, or a different URL you can say. Uh, it's called Ariba okay. Discovery, which will have all these three million suppliers. So there is a way you can actually post your um, introduction to your RFX on the discovery, so that your prospect suppliers can see, and it sends notifications and all to do to the matching suppliers as well. So that matchmaking feature as well is there in Ariba uh, called Ariba Discovery. Okay. And one more thing, you know, I want to make a statement saying that you know Ariba is actually pushing all the strategic buying only to the guided buying. In the future, you know, hopefully very soon, there will be no concept called buying, only guided buying. See, they, they will brand it as guided buying, but buying the guided bank doesn't work without buying, right? In order for yeah. it to work, you need the foundation, which is your buying, right? Anyways, that's a long story. Uh, if do you have any other questions, uh, Ravi, I think some other people want to probably speak up. Yeah, yeah thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Those were very good questions. I think uh, who else wants to ask? Yeah, uh, you said uh, Ariba supports mainly for indirect procurement. So Ariba if in case, uh, yeah, supports yeah. indirect. Right. So in case of a direct procurement, like where material involves, are there any such kind of scenarios that happened where SF, uh, Ariba supports it in integration with SAP? Yeah, as we said, sourcing RFX, right? You need to hmm. um, get your um, RFP out for your materials. Yeah, it supports that as well. Material masters, uh, material master can be used for sending those RFP out. With integration of the material master. I mean, on the downstream side, creation of purchase orders, kind of different other procurement scenarios. Yeah, of course, those, those transactions are uh, integrated to SAP. That's what you meant? Or did you mean yes. use material master yes, and yes, uh, like, transaction? No. Uh, on the transactional uh, front, I mean to say, a PO got created with material, then it, it should no, get no, reflected no, no. or transmitted to Ariba. So, the thing is, the concept of material master, as I was saying, that material master concept is for SAP. You can do subcontracting, you can do consignment, you can do inventory management through MRP. Those concepts are in SAP. You don't buy for material master using using Garrett Bank. Garrett Bank is for, um, you can say in SAP language, it's for free text. Okay, which so, means it is not yeah. possible in Ariba. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's it from me. Uh, one thing I want to, you know, highlight one point here. Ariba is not an ERP solution that we need to keep in our mind. And most of the time, the people who are coming from, you know, MMR, s food sourcing and procurement, they will be, you know, having a little tougher time <laughs> than those who are freshly coming in here. Because they are, uh, we, we always say like, you need to learn unlearn few of the mm concepts here okay if we keep on always comparing the mm concepts with ariba that's not really going to be you know satisfying you i can't say it's difficult but it's not satisfying oh this thing is there in this one we can do so many good things in mm side but we we have a lot of restrictions here kind of and even we can't do any enhancement also here because you can't make a paper to sit and do the do our work as per our business requirements no here no so you need to raise an er again okay enhancement request to sap Ariba that cost a lot and it's solely in their hands like they want to approve it or not so there are you know few of the things but overall if you see Ariba is a right now it's a very mature solution i can say yeah any more questions guys hello is there anyone wants to ask any questions? Uh, one more, uh, Eras. Yeah, buying and uh, guided buying is same, right? I little bit confused actually here in this. <laughs> buying and you guided. see, like uh, SAP is basically, if you see, if you are a SAP consultant, you might have came across. 
SAP is good in changing the naming conventions. <laughs> the oh, concepts okay. are going to be very similar. Like they want to make it so complicated with the name. So Shakespeare says like was there in the name, but here SAP always, you know, keep on focusing on the different terminologies, different names. Correct. They have the you know the marketing strategies. So with the same name, with the same most almost the same functionalities, they add only five or ten percent more functionalities in that one, and they'll come up with a new fancy name. to make the people to, to think like oh this is something great and this is something and they 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 explore those things they you know portray in a very different way in the tickets and all those things you, all of us know okay. about it so don't go with the names and almost the same i can say so as mani said very rightly so without buying buying is the base so where the guided buying is coming here right so something like this so there is no much difference in there both are same right uh, we any different any different uh... process for buying and guided buying no right uh, process here, wise there are mean... differences yeah process wise there are little differences so that we are going to see in the sessions all together but the conceptually if you are saying like same you can say i can say same yeah okay 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 fine buying and invoicing is nothing but a guided buying right for now i think that's what you can say yeah until we go into details then you'll see exactly what okay okay clear yeah. money yeah yeah we'll see <laughs> anyway yeah we'll yeah see. i think it's it, like it's we can speak like for 5 minutes on same thing but you probably won't understand that until you see it yes yes oh. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> fine line between them <laughs> it's okay. a very fine line between them yeah for yeah. somebody new it's it can be very confusing yeah mm, so but once you are going through the complete uh, training and all so it will be very clear once you do the practically how the things you are achieving over there you will have a clarity on that Okay, got it, got it. We'll see in that one later. Yeah. yeah. All right. You. All right. Most welcome, sir. Okay, guys. Is there anyone else who has the questions to ask? By the way, very good questions in today's session. I really appreciate every one of you, and all of you are having very good understanding in procurement side. So that's a going to be very interesting discussion over here. And guys, in our sessions also, the same way we'll be following it. Like the discussion is going to be very healthy here because. most of the participants are going to be very experienced one and they are sharing their even their project experiences as well and manish is sharing his project experiences like all the concepts scenario based we are going to drive in for the, this particular course so that's going to be very interesting going forward so guys is anybody else any questions any will questions? it cover any necessary? project uh, any end to end project uh, eras like uh, we can handle any new implementation right after this uh, you see end to end project because i'll just give in a very simple scenario because this question is very oftenly asked okay uh, you see like four resources working in 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 ariba project end to end project i'm talking about so it will take approximately 18 to 20 months to finish it out okay right from requirement gathering blueprint like then after that you know implementation then testing and go live and all these processes will take at least 18 months right so this 18 months how we are going to confine it into 5 weeks we can't do that man huh. right and, i i just need a high level things. topics yeah 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 that is you see like for example i'll just give you a very simple example like uh, we are talking about uh, for example um anything like sourcing or approval process let's say okay approval process there are different uh, multiple layers of approval processes are there so these approval processes we are going to discuss how these things how a scenario we are going to create a scenario over there okay so in actual your project so what kind of scenarios may come over there so based on that we are going to discuss the scenarios here and we are going to do the configurations based on that so it means like you are going to have a project touch is not 100% if i'm saying 100% end to end project implementation training nobody can give okay nobody can give so that's not really yeah, possible yeah. but there are lot of scenarios will be discussed during the training which will help you once you are onboarded on any project so you'll be having lot of confidence on that one so yeah these things already i came across i have seen not in a very you know deepest level but at least in a uh, handleable level i can say you can do it yeah okay yeah Okay, that's fine. That confidence I can give you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, guys. Is there any more questions?
All right, then if nobody is having any queries, so we can wind up the session, Manish. Yes, let's do that. Let's meet tomorrow. All right, then. Yes, guys. Thank you. Really appreciate all yeah. of your participation here, guys. And I hope like the energy will be the same for tomorrow's session as well and going forward. Yep. Thank you so sure. much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye thank all. you. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice time. Bye bye.